You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. We have had so many conversations here about LSU's slow starts this year, and it's kind of undeniable, right? Um, they got down to Florida State, had to have the big rally. They were down 13-0 to Mississippi State. They were down 17-0 at Auburn. Uh, Florida scored on the second play of the game. Uh, we know what happened against Tennessee, unfortunately. Even Ole Miss, I mean, boom, 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 five plays right down the field scored. LSU was down 17-3 to in that one. So the slow starts have been a thing. And Brian Kelly and his staff obviously are aware of the slow starts and are working to try to fix that. So on Monday, Brian Kelly was asked, okay, so how do you fix it? What are you doing to fix the slow starts? And he actually gave some very uh, tangible examples of things they're doing. You know, we all look at things that, that I need to do in terms of preparation for our players. What I started doing about uh, three weeks ago is I moved up some articulation or some uh, contact, uh, you know, 11 on 11 <laughs> contact from when it would be 45 Pause minutes it. in the practice. Pause I it. Pause it. Your boy said articulation. Has there ever been an LSU coach who, instead of saying contact, used the word articulation in the history of LSU football? I, I don't think so. I have no answer for that. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I can't think of one. Can you scroll it back about five seconds yeah. and pick up the clip? Okay, thank you. We pick it up with articulation. Well, just play it, Muse. Just hit play. Contact. Thank you. Um, you know, 11 on 11 contact from when it would be 45 minutes into practice. I moved it up into the first 20 minutes of practice to kind of heighten that and get our guys ready immediately when they come out to practice that, hey, we're going to, we need to get after it. We need to be ready right away to build that in. Now, that's only been a couple of weeks. So we're trying to build that in. You know, we're trying to look at uh, some quizzes before, you know, uh, on Saturday morning and, and, and making sure that we're sharp <laughs> mentally. So we're looking at all those things uh, to make sure. And sometimes it's maybe it's just, you got to go make a play. Yeah, you know, let's make that catch. Let's make that play uh, and get off to a good start. I respect so much his attention to detail and his desire to, like, nail down everything. But your boy's talking about articulation and game day quizzes. I mean, what is like Mad Libs? Are you doing, like, crossword puzzles? What's what's the thing? What was the thing that was hot for a minute? Like, the daily, uh, the word? Uh, the wordle? Wordle. wordle. Like, is that what yeah. they're doing? I mean, what football are you doing? Wordle. Like, football wordle to stay sharp? I mean, I'm not. Look, I get it. It's... It's been a problem of trying to fix it, so you're trying everything I understand. A couple things. Number one, as far as the contact early in practice, so if you missed it, what he's saying is, look, we were basically not having contact periods in practice until like 45 minutes into practice. So we're doing it now earlier in practice to make guys show up ready to go. Um, I covered LSU, I've covered LSU for, uh, I think this is my 15th season. Les Miles started every practice, started every practice after stretch with the big cat drill. There is no greater articulation, as it were, than the big cat drill. It's two dudes, like, bull in a ring, just knocking each other over. LSU lost five straight under less miles. The last five straight under less miles, starting with the championship game through uh, 20, I guess his last game that he coached against Bama was 20, the 2014 game. He didn't coach the 2015 game. So, so I guess four, the last four straight, um, which was part of the eight-game losing streak. That that didn't make a difference. Um I mean, as far as quizzes, we talked about I, game day quizzes. I, I can understand trying to stay mentally sharp. But when I went and listened to it, like, can you play the end of that cut again? Like, after he talked about the quizzes? Because what he basically said is, sometimes just like, you just got to go make a play. Can you play that again, please? We're looking at all those things uh, to make sure. And sometimes it's maybe it's just, you got to go make a play. You know, let's make that catch. Let's make that play uh, and get off to a good start. Okay, so I told you that I, we might be overreacting a little bit to the slow starts. Here's what I mean. Do you remember how the Florida State game started? LSU got the ball. First play of the game, Jaden Daniels scrambled left side for 25 yards. He got hit late out of bounds. On the second offensive snap was when they threw the deep ball into the end zone to Kayshawn. That was contested. He didn't come down with it. But LSU did manage to end up with a first and goal at the seven. And on second and goal from the five, 
Garrett Dellinger snapped the ball 15 yards over Jaden Daniels head and LSU kicked a field goal. Like, you were moving the ball there. Florida State's first offensive possession, they missed a field goal. The rest of the first half for Florida State, after the missed field goal, was touchdown, fumble, downs. They ended the, uh, their last possession was on, on downs. Um, the problem for LSU is here was LSU's possessions to start the game after the field goal. LSU led 3 nothing. After the field goal, punt, missed field goal, end of half, punt, and then in the fourth quarter, touchdown, touchdown, end the game. Your offense was slow to get going that day. If you look at the Mississippi State, I'm not going to talk about Southern or, or, or New Mexico, but look at Mississippi State. We focus so much on LSU being down 13 nothing in that game, which they were. And Mississippi State scored on its opening possession. But after that opening possession touchdown by Mississippi State, here was the rest of the half. After the touchdown, they went downs, downs, punt, punt, touchdown, punt. The problem, this was LSU's offense in the first half. Punt, 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 fumble, punt, punt, touchdown, end of half. So you were down 13-0 before we scored at the end of the half to make it 13-7. So we focused so much on the 13-0 as if the defense was struggling so much. The problem was your offense didn't get going until the very end of the half and then carried it on into the, into the second half. Let's look at Auburn. Auburn, we know LSU got down 17-0 on the road against Auburn. And Auburn hit the busted play, had the ball to start the game hit the busted play touchdown, so they were up 7-0. But after Auburn got up 7-0, your defense held them to punt, punt, scored another touchdown, field goal, and then they fumbled, you, know, you scoop and score, then they missed a field goal at the end of the half. Problem was, not LSU's defense. Defense gave you an opportunity. Offense to start the Auburn game. Punt, 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 punt. Fumble return for a touchdown. Touchdown, just like that, it's 17-14 at half. I think we focus so much. The Tennessee game was an absolute abomination, as we know. You just sort of crumple that one up and throw it away. They were a much better team that, that skunked you. Against Florida, you allowed a touchdown on the second play of the game. But what was the difference in the Florida game? Your first six possessions were touchdown, 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 touchdown. Your offense was rolling. That was the big difference. And then what happened against Ole Miss? The same thing. Your offense was churning. I know you were down 17-3, to three, but you had an opportunity. You, you settled for a field goal. You had a turnover. I, I get it. Like, there were some of those things that didn't go your way, but your defense settled in, and your offense was churning from the beginning, and ultimately you scored, you know, you scored 45 in that game. So it was less – I guess my point is we focus so much on the slow starts for LSU, but really – it, defensively, it's really just been mostly the the singular opening possession of the game, and it's I, I use fighting analogies a lot, and I like fighting, and you know that I like you know I, I like combat sports, but it's so true. You go in with a plan, and sometimes fighters are aggressive and want to set the tone, and sometimes you want to play defense and you want to see how you're going to be attacked, and then you counterpunch. LSU as a defense right now is a counterpuncher. They're going to wait for you to make the first move, and then they're going to adjust. And once they adjust, they're going to put you in a headlock, and you're not going to move for the next 45 minutes of the game. And we've seen that. That's basically what Matt House's defense does. They're going to let you throw the first punch, and then they're going to adjust. The key for LSU is offensively, the last couple of games, as we've seen the offense get better, the slow start has a, has the LSU offense has avoided the slow start. That was the problem early in the season. The defense has actually been pretty dang consistent all year. The problem, except the Tennessee game, the problem is the offense couldn't get out of its way until late in the first half and into the second half. But the last two games against Florida on the road and home against Ole Miss, we've seen the offense churn and burn from jump. That's the key. That's the key Saturday. Like, 
as much as we've talked about the slow starts, my opinion, when you look at it, as you dig it, you know, dig deeper, the defense was getting stops. It was giving the offense opportunities. You would have never been down that against Mississippi State, against uh, Auburn. If your offense had gotten going earlier against Florida State, you would have had a lead at halftime. You were only, it was a 7-3 to three game at half. The biggest reason to believe LSU will get started faster is because they've done it the last two weeks. The, the last two games, I should say. The offense has found its rhythm, its pacing. The offensive line has been solidified. Jaden Daniels is more comfortable throwing the football. They found yards on the ground in the run game, and they've just been a much more explosive, competent offense. So there's no reason to believe that wouldn't carry through this weekend. I don't Look, Bama may take an early lead. I kind of expect them to take an early lead. Because that's how LSU is defensively. If Bama gets the ball to start the game, I expect they'll go down and get points. But after that, I expect LSU is going to get stops and give the offense an opportunity to get rolling because we've seen that every game as well. Maybe just a little bit of clarity behind the air quotes slow start, which may not be as bad as we think. Maybe it's just how LSU plays defensively and the key was getting the offense to catch up so it didn't, it didn't, uh, put the defensive struggles in that first possession under such a magnifying glass because defense has been really good in the first half of most ball games. It's just magnified because of that first possession that they allowed State to score and Auburn to score and Florida to score and Ole Miss to score. Yeah, I mean, all those teams scored on their first possession, but then then LSU defensively put the clamps down. Can the offense get rolling? That's That's the key, and that's what we have seen the last two games. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.